syncope, or fainting is a common reason for visits to emergency departments. It can result from a variety of causes, some of which are cardiac in origin and potentially life-threatening. To systematically evaluate electrocardiograms in patients with syncope, particularly when there are no obvious signs of ischemia or dysrhythmia, the wobbler mnemonic serves as a valuable tool. This structured approach helps identify critical but less common abnormalities on an electrocardiogram that may be associated with syncope. Understanding the Wobbler Components The Wobbler mnemonic stands for seven key components that clinicians should assess during the evaluation of an electrocardiogram. These components include Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, obstructed atrioventricular pathway, bifascicular block Brugada syndrome, left ventricular hypertrophy, epsilon wave, and repolarization abnormality. Each component represents a specific condition that may contribute to syncope and requires careful analysis. Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is characterized by the presence of an accessory electrical pathway between the atria and ventricles, bypassing the normal atrioventricular node pathway. On an electrocardiogram, this condition presents with a PR interval of less than 120 milliseconds and a delta wave at the beginning of the QRS complex. Patients with this syndrome are at an increased risk of developing tachyarrhythmias. Obstructed atrioventricular pathway. An obstructed atrioventricular pathway involves conduction delays or blocks within the atrioventricular node. Signs of this condition include second-degree heart block, specifically Mobitz type 2, or third-degree heart block on the electrocardiogram. Identifying these patterns is essential for determining the underlying cause of syncope. Bifascicular block. A bifascicular block affects two out of the three major fascicles in the heart's conduction system. This condition commonly presents as a right bundle branch block combined with either a left anterior fascicular block or a left posterior fascicular block. The presence of widened QRS complexes may indicate this type of block. Brugada syndrome. Brugada syndrome is identified by characteristic coved ST segment elevation in leads V1 through V3 on an electrocardiogram. This syndrome is associated with a high risk of sudden cardiac death due to ventricular fibrillation. Recognizing this pattern is critical for timely intervention. Left ventricular hypertrophy. Left ventricular hypertrophy is another important consideration when evaluating an electrocardiogram. Conditions such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and aortic stenosis should be considered if left ventricular hypertrophy is noted. These conditions can lead to exertional syncope due to left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Epsilon wave. The epsilon wave is associated with arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. This wave appears as small positive deflections after the QRS complex and leads V1 through V3. Its presence may indicate an underlying structural heart disease that requires further investigation. Repolarization abnormality. Repolarization abnormalities include prolonged QT intervals, defined as greater than 500 milliseconds, which are indicative of long QT syndrome. This condition poses risks for torsades to points and sudden death. Short QT syndrome also exists, but is encountered less frequently. Practical application of the wobbler mnemonic. When using the wobbler mnemonic, begin by examining each component systematically, starting from the P wave and proceeding through the T wave. This approach is most useful when there are no obvious ischemic changes or dysrhythmias visible on the electrocardiogram. While the conditions represented by wobbler are rare, they can be life-threatening if overlooked. Findings should always be correlated with clinical history and other diagnostic tests such as echocardiography, when necessary. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.